Welcome to our third week of discussion. Last week, you were able to convert a verbal description of a physical situation involving uniform acceleration in one dimension into a mathematical description. Moreover, you have solved for unknown quantities in equations and understand the use of four kinematic equations. For this week, you are going to combine the vertical and horizontal component to come up with a motion in two dimension. Let's have first the objectives. First, define projectile motion operationally and analyze projectile motion to find position, time of flight, and range. Second, compute for the vertical and horizontal distances traveled by a projectile. Third, apply its concept in everyday life. Fourth, State the independence of the vertical and the horizontal components of velocity for a projectile in a uniform field. Lastly, describe and sketch the trajectory of projectile motion as parabolic in the absence of air resistance. To give you a glimpse of introduction to our lesson, we have this question. Who among you have already played Angry Birds? Now, how did the Angry Birds aim for their targets? Did they aim for a straight path or a curved path? Surely a curved path. In a curved path, there are two vector components present, the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. We have the horizontal velocity component. Horizontal velocity component never changes. It covers equal displacements in equal time periods. An initial horizontal velocity is equal to the final horizontal velocity. In other words, the horizontal velocity is constant. Why? Because gravity does not work horizontally to increase or decrease the velocity. Vertical velocity component. Vertical velocity component changes due to gravity. It does not cover equal displacements in equal time periods. As the height of the object increases, the velocity decreases. But as the height of the object decreases, the velocity increases. Therefore, the relationship between the height of the object and the velocity is indirectly proportional. Together, these components produce a path called trajectory or projectile. What is projectile? A projectile is an object moving in two dimensions under the influence of gravity. In general, any two-dimensional motion is made up of two independent, simultaneous, one-dimensional motions at right angles to each other. It is also a combination of horizontal motion with constant velocity and vertical motion with constant acceleration. Let's now have the parts of a projectile motion. First is trajectory. It is a path that an object with mass and motion follows through space as a function of time. Second is the range. Range is the distance between the launch point and the point where the projectile hits the ground. Range is measured in meters. Third, we have the maximum height. It is the highest vertical position along its trajectory. Maximum height is also measured in meters. There are two conditions in projectile motion. Projectile launch at the horizontal or the horizontally launched projectiles and projectile launched at an angle or the vertically launched projectiles. 
let's have horizontally launched projectiles. Horizontally launched projectiles have no upward trajectory. It has no initial vertical velocity. Therefore, initial vertical velocity is equal to 0 meter per second, while initial horizontal velocity is always constant. Since the projectile was launched at an angle, the velocity must be broken into two components. In finding for the initial horizontal velocity, we have initial velocity cosine theta, while in initial vertical velocity, we have initial velocity sine theta. Formula in the first condition, under horizontal motion, considering that acceleration is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. Velocity, initial vertical velocity is equal to 0. Final vertical velocity square is equal to 2 times gravity times height. Final vertical velocity is equal to gravity times time. Displacement. Height is equal to 1 half times gravity times t square. Also, height is equal to final vertical velocity square over 2 times gravity. To analyze a projectile in two dimensions, we need two equations, one for the x direction and one for the y direction. We have x is equal to the initial horizontal velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time square. Remember, the velocity is constant horizontally, so that means the acceleration is zero. Therefore, x is equal to the initial horizontal velocity times time. On the other hand, remember that since the projectile is launched horizontally, the initial vertical velocity is equal to zero. Therefore, y is equal to one half times gravity times time square. Now let's have the vertically launched projectiles. In vertically launched projectiles, vertical velocity decreases on the way upward while vertical velocity increases on the way down. Always remember that the horizontal velocity is constant, while there is no vertical velocity at the top of the trajectory. Formula in the second condition, under horizontal motion considering that acceleration is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. Velocity we have Initial horizontal velocity is equal to initial velocity times cosine theta is also equal to final horizontal velocity. Displacement is equal to initial horizontal velocity times time is equal to initial velocity times cosine theta times time. Another Maximum range or displacement at the horizontal motion is equal to initial velocity squared divided by gravity. We have the formula in the velocity, displacement, and time in the second condition under vertical motion considering that acceleration is equal to 9.8 meter per second squared. There are several things that you must consider when doing these types of projectiles besides using component. If it begins and ends at ground level, the Y displacement is always zero. Let's have the first example under projectile motion. A plane traveling with a horizontal velocity of 100 meter per second is 500 meters above the ground, 
At some point, the pilot decided to drop some supplies to designated. Compute for A, how long before the supplies hit the target, and B, how far away from point where it was launched will it land. In the given example, we have initial horizontal velocity is equal to 100 meter per second. Displacement or height is equal to 500 meters. Since the object is launched horizontally, therefore, the initial vertical velocity is equal to 100 meter per second. We also have the acceleration due to gravity which is negative 9.8 meter per second square. Now we are looking for the time before the supplies hit the target and the range or x from the point where it was launched. The projectile was launched horizontally. We have to consider the two formulas that was aforementioned in the discussion. The equation for y direction, which is y is equal to 1 half gravity times time square. And x direction, that is equal to initial horizontal velocity times time. Let's start by finding the time using the y equation. We have the formula y is equal to 1 half times gravity times time square. The direction of the supply is downward, therefore, the value must be negative. Always remember that signs in projectiles are meant for direction. So it will be negative 500 meters is equal to 1 half times negative 9.8 meter per second square times time square. Deriving the formula, we have 2 times negative 500 meters is equal to negative 9.8 meter per second square times time square. Divide both sides by negative 9.8 meter per second square. Now we have t square is equal to 2 times negative 500 meters divided by negative 9.8 meter per second square. Cancel similar signs. Now, extracting the square, we have t, or time, is equal to a square root of 102. Now, the square root of 102 is equal to 10.01 seconds. Therefore, it will take 10.01 seconds before the supplies hit the target. For letter B, we have to find for the range. We have the formula x is equal to initial horizontal velocity times time. Substituting the values, we have 100 meter per second times 10.1 seconds is equal to 1,010 meters. Therefore, the distance would be 1,010 meters. Second example, find the range of an arrow that leaves a bow at 50 meters per second at an angle of 10 degrees below the horizontal. The time it takes for an arrow to reach the ground is 3 seconds. What is the height of an arrow from the ground? In the example, we have the given velocity is equal to 50 meters per second. Theta is equal to 10 degrees. And time is equal to 3 seconds. Now we have to find for the value of range and the value of height. Let's find range by using R is equal to V1 cosine theta times time. Substituting the values, 50 meter per second times 10 times 3 seconds is equal to 147.72 meters. While in finding for the height, we have the formula 1 half gt square. Substituting the values, we have 
1 half times 9.8 meter per second square times 3 seconds square. Now we have 44.1 meters. Therefore, the range of an arrow with a velocity of 50 meters per second launched at an angle of 10 degrees below the horizontal is 147.72 meters with a height of 44.1 meter from the ground. Example number 3. An object is launched at a velocity of 20 meters per second in a direction making an angle of 25 degrees upward with the horizontal. Find the following A. Maximum height B. Total flight and C. Horizontal range Let's have the given for this example. Velocity is 20 meters per second theta is 25 degrees, and acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. Now we have the illustration of a path taken by the projectile. Let's find for the height. The height of the projectile is given by the component y, and it reaches its maximum value when the component vertical velocity is equal to zero. Solve first for the value of time using the formula t is equal to v1 sine theta divided by the gravity. Substituting the values, 20 meter per second sine 25 divided by 9.8 meter per second squared. That leads us to 0.86 seconds. Now find for the value of the maximum height by substituting the t or the time by 0.86 seconds in the formula for y, which is v1 sine theta times time minus 1 half gt square. Substituting the values, 20 meter per second sine 25 times 0.86 seconds minus 1 half times 9.8 meter per second square times 0 0.86 second square. Now we have 3.64 meters. Let's find for the total flight. Total flight is equal to 2 v naught sine theta divided by the gravity. Substituting the values, 2 times 20 meter per second, sine 25 divided by 9.8 meter per second square. Now we have 1.72 seconds. For the maximum range, we have the formula initial velocity square sine times 2 theta divided by gravity. Substituting the values, we have 20 meter per second square sine 2 times 25 divided by 9.8 meter per second square is equal to 400 meter square per second square sine times 2 times 25 divided by 9.8 meter per second square. Now we have the value 31.27 meters. Now let's proceed to uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion is a motion of an object traveling at constant or uniform speed on a circular path. We have the parts of a uniform circular motion, centripetal force, radius of circle, path of motion, and the velocity direction. Period in a uniform circular motion is the time required to travel once around the circle. That is to make one complete revolution. We have the formula in finding for the period T is equal to 1 over frequency. Period is measured in seconds 
while frequency is measured in hertz or per second. Frequency refers to the number of cycle per unit of time. We have the formula F is equal to 1 over T, where T is the period measured in seconds and F is the frequency measured in hertz or per second. Let's have the tangential speed. Tangential speed measures how quickly an object going in a circle is traveling. We have the formula V is equal to 2 pi r over t, where V is the tangential speed measured in meter per second, t is the period measured in seconds, r is the radius measured in meters, and pi has a value of 3.14. Next, we have the centripetal acceleration. It is the acceleration of an object that points toward the center of a circle. We have the formula, centripetal acceleration is equal to V square over R. Where centripetal acceleration is measured in meter per second square, tangential speed is measured in meter per second, and R is radius measured in meters. Lastly, we have centripetal force. It is an inward force that provides an object to move in a circular path with its centripetal acceleration. We have the formula, centripetal force is equal to mv square over r, where centripetal force is measured in newton, tangential speed is measured in meter per second, r is the radius measured in meters, and M is mass measured in kilograms. Let's have an example for the uniform circular motion. A 900 kilograms car moving at 10 meters per second takes a turn around a circle with a radius of 25 meters. Determine the acceleration and the net force acting upon the car. We have the given for this example. We have M is equal to 900 kilograms, V is 10 meters per second, and R is 25 meters. Now in finding for the centripetal acceleration, we have the formula V square over R. Substituting the values, we have 10 meter per second square divided by 25 meters is equal to 100 meters square per second square over 25 meters. Cancel similar units to lead us to our answer 4 meter per second square. In finding for the centripetal force, we have mass times acceleration, where mass is 900 kilograms and acceleration is 4 meter per second square. 900 kilograms times 4 meters per second square is equal to 3,600 newtons. Example number 5. Determine the centripetal force acting upon a 40 kilogram child who makes 10 revolutions around the cliffhanger in 29.3 seconds. The radius of the barrel is 2.90 meters. Let's have the given. Mass is 40 kilograms. Radius is 2.90 meters. And time is equal to 2.93 seconds since 10 cycles takes 29.3 seconds. Finding the velocity, we have 2 pi r divided by t. Substituting the values, 2 times 3.14 times 2.90 meters divided by 2.93 seconds is equal to 6.22 meters per second. While in finding for the centripetal acceleration, we have v square over r. Substituting the values, 
6.22 meter per second square divided by 2.90 meters is equal to 38.69 meters square over second square divided by 2.90 meters. Cancel similar units. Now we have 13.34 meter per second square. Lastly, let's find for the value of the centripetal force. Now we can make use of mass times acceleration, where mass is 40 kilograms and acceleration is 13.34 meters per second square. Now 40 kilograms times 13.34 meters per second square is equal to 533.6 newtons. Just like in life, there are many factors that challenge us through our journey. But as we fly with our dreams, there will be a time that we will be able to attain the highest peak of our life. As we go on and look back, we can see our range is far from where we started. You just have to believe.